So you have actually a piece right now on The Economist about China. What do you make of what's going on economically right now in China? What do we know? Well, right now, the Chinese economy is really not in very good shape. We know that. We've, it's, it's in the middle of a very big property bust. Growth has been slowing. It's slipped into deflation. There's a tremendous loss of confidence. Investment, foreign investment has collapsed. Domestic confidence has collapsed. Why is the stock market in China so low? What's caused China's stock markets to plummet the most? According to Zhang Yuan Zoe Liu, a researcher on China at the Council on Foreign Relations, the Chinese economy so far has been sluggish and very disappointing since the country's protracted zero-COVID policy ended. Foreign investors are becoming less inclined to try to profit from the continuing decline in Chinese stocks, which have reached their lowest point since before the pandemic. There is less and less hope that Beijing will act more forcefully to boost the economy or win back the trust of firms and consumers. When investors see an unfavorable picture, the CSI 300 index has dropped to its lowest level since January 2019. Data show that the post-COVID economic recovery is still stuttering along, but there are a few signs that Beijing's authorities are prepared to provide much beyond the meager assistance they have already offered. Foreign investors are becoming increasingly cautious due to growing concerns about domestic and international policies. Despite being disappointing, the recovery from zero COVID is over, states Shazad Kazi, managing director of China Beige Book. Despite Beijing's efforts to support the economy, fourth quarter data from the independent research firm revealed that growth in enterprises' revenue and earnings slowed as the year came to an end with scant indications of an increase in borrowing in the fourth quarter. Investor excitement was rekindled by expectations for more significant stimulus, but it now seems to be waning. According to Cameron Branch, head of research at EFPR, which monitors fund flows, each surge in stimulus-related optimism is less strong and passes more quickly, according to him. Local investors are also showing a greater interest in Chinese stocks. The MSKI China Index, which has been down 9% so far this year, has returned to its October 2022 low prior to China easing the stringent regulations that had stifled the country's economy during the pandemic. With a loss of almost 8% so far this year, the onshore MSCI China A shares index has fared only somewhat better. The fact that those decreases are unlikely to cause Beijing to alter its stance on stimulus presents an issue for investors. In addition to having little influence in the home market, foreign investors are mostly concentrated in the offshore sector, which is controlled by internet firms. According to Arthur Krober, head of research at Gavakal, an investment and research firm with headquarters in Hong Kong, those companies are also out of favor as the government works to support industries like semiconductors and industrials that may support its aspirations to become more self-reliant. Another problem is that Chinese companies can still raise money by selling equity, which may make Beijing feel less pressure to take action. About 400 initial public offerings on the A-share market last year, together with another 800 in line for IPAs, helped to stimulate the domestic market, even though Kreber anticipates some more economic stimulus during the year mostly in the form of investments in affordable housing and infrastructure spending. That is probably not going to be enough to drive inflation-adjusted economic growth to within 5% of the government's aim. That indicates nominal growth of almost 4% when deflation is taken into account. That's what matters most for stock values, according to Krober, which is why he anticipates that Chinese markets will have another dismal year. According to him, a third point that is negative for stocks is that not all sectors of the economy require immediate assistance, which lessens the likelihood that Beijing will provide the kind of stimulus that investors have been clamoring for. Even though real estate investment is still struggling, Kreber points out that manufacturing is beginning to show signs of improvement at the margin and that other areas of the economy are doing better. However, that agony might persist for some time, although there may be some stabilization in the real estate market this year. According to Nick Borst, director of China Research at the emerging markets-focused investment firm Sifari Capital Partners, the shrinking real estate sector means there is a huge gap in spending that Beijing's increased investments in technology and industrials cannot fill. Furthermore, Borst is concerned about the financial stability of local governments 
even if developers' troubles have received the majority of attention when it comes to the real estate industry. They are currently constrained, despite having previously served as Beijing's primary conduit for its stimulus initiatives. Last year, for the first time in decades, more foreign cash left China than arrived. The way the market has moved recently suggests that Jamie Dimon, the CEO of Jake Morgan, was right when he indicated this week in a CNBC interview that the risks and rewards in China changed dramatically. It seems that investors are lowering their expectations before entering any of the world's less expensive markets. What's caused China's stock markets to plummet the most? According to Zongyuan Zoe Lu, a researcher on China at the Council on Foreign Relations, the Chinese economy so far has been sluggish and very disappointing since the country's protracted zero COVID policy ended. To begin with, the housing market is a complete mess. China's outstanding economic growth can be attributed solely to urbanization, and the country will continue to experience urbanization. China's population has gone from being largely rural to being more urbanized during the course of three decades of economic reform, and an additional 20 years or more of urbanization are predicted for China. Many changes must occur as individuals move from a rural to an urban lifestyle. The development and construction of cities necessitate an expansion of the economy, infrastructure, and other services. When people start to specialize and stop working just to make ends meet, economies change. Since more education is needed for that specialization, societies with higher levels of education tend to be affluent. The quality of life increases as per capita wealth rises. Businesses start to spring up throughout this phase, and many of them end up making enormous profits for their investors. One common comparison between China and America prior to the Industrial Revolution is the China of a few years ago. If you ignore several significant distinctions between the two, the comparison is fairly true. Like growth in the 20th century, which went to the United States, growth in the 21st century is probably going to belong to China. Many people are still looking at investing opportunities in China because of the expansion that is expected to generate economic output worth trillions of dollars in the near future. Any wise investor in China should be fully aware of the dangers associated with any investment in order to maximize the potential profit. Although a thorough examination of every risk associated with investing in China is well outside the purview of this piece, knowing the fundamentals offers a strong starting point. It's crucial to realize that danger shouldn't discourage investment but as a responsible investor, you should make an effort to fully comprehend the risks and take them into consideration. So that's all for today. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to receive notifications.